Okay. Uh, hello, Youth Go Families. I decided to wear my awesome grandma glasses today. I love these so much. <laughs> um, but anyways, <laughs> I have a quick announcement. Um, we will start sending out art supplies with our food share baskets on Thursdays. So you can use this art supplies to complete the upcoming projects. Um, I recognize not everybody has a lot of things uh, or wants to go out and buy art supplies, so we're sending you some. Um, so if you are someone who does not receive our food baskets slash hygiene products, make sure you reach out about them if you need them and our youth go family. Um, or even if you just want the art supplies and you don't need the food or hygiene products, Make sure you let somebody know. Email us at info at youthgo.org. Email me at danielle at youthgo.org. Whatever. Just get it to somebody. We'll make sure that we have a basket for you. Um, so the free resources I have for you today, there will be a link in the description uh, of a list of 15 aquariums and zoos that have virtual programs in place for you right now. Um, so you can go ahead and take a look at those. It might help you complete this week's prompt. I'm also putting links to different types of doughs that you can make to complete this week's prompt because I used a type of uh, dough that I have on hand. So I recognize not everyone has access to clay or model magic or even play-doh. Um, so you can use one of the recipes that I post in the description. Um, there are a couple different recipes with all varying ingredients because some of the things I don't even have, like I don't have cornstarch in my cupboard right now. So there's some that are just two ingredients, some are like flour and salt and other things, you know, just kind of normal staples that most people will have. Um... So you can go ahead and find one that works for you, or you can even Google search uh, dough or Play-Doh or clay recipes because there's a whole bunch out there. Um, so this week's prompt is prompt number six, your favorite animal. Uh, I happen to have some model magic, so I made one of my favorite animals out of model magic. So I made... An octopus. Isn't he fantastic? All right, so I'll tell you what I did. Um, so I made an armature first out of aluminum foil. So inside all of these tentacles and inside this big round head shape thing, body of my octopus, it's aluminum foil. Um, and then I did my model magic over the top some reasons why you might want to use aluminum foil or some kind of armature as your base is if you're only able to make a certain amount of dough, it'll make your dough stretch. And what I mean by that is not stretch, like literally, I mean like figuratively, like you can make less dough and have it cover more of an area. Um, it also will speed up drying times and hopefully help it so that like because I didn't want to make just like the body fully out of dough. That would take forever for, for it to dry. And sometimes things like that never dry. And then it's still malleable or like squishy. And it just, it, does, it doesn't work out the best. So you want to have some sort of armature in the middle or some placeholder. You could even use paper, like newspaper that you've crumpled up and taped with masking tape to make your armature. It's just like something for you to build around. Um, and then I colored it, which I was thinking, you know, do I want to paint my octopus realistic? Or do I want to do something a bit more fun and abstract? Not that realistic isn't fun, but it's not fun for me personally. Um, when I create things that I'm trying to look realistic, it's normally very nitpicky and... It takes me a lot longer of a time and I obsess over details and that's just kind of the person I am. So I decided to do something more whimsical and weird and abstract. Um, so I colored mine with ink because I looked up what sorts of things you can use to 
color model magic because I wasn't sure how porous it was, what kinds of things are going to adhere to the surface, like if acrylic paint worked best, whatever. Um, I had read that you can use watercolor and since ink is a close relative of watercolor, I decided to go with that. Um, and actually I like how it looks more than if I would have used watercolor because my ink got, like it dried shiny. So it's, it's like it has the glaze on it and I don't even have a glaze, you know? So it's shiny and it's awesome. And then, um, of course I made the bottom black because octopus, um, Oct octopi shoot out ink so they're inky and it looks very shiny and awesome too um so it works out I kind of I think I might go in and like do some detailed like blurbs up to make it look bubbly more like a bubbly ink that's coming up over the sides of my octopus I didn't give him a face or anything because I really couldn't pick which way I wanted him to face. So he's just, he's just a cute little octopus all on his own. He's like the perfect size for my hand too. So he's kind of like a, a stress ball, um, which is kind of nice. <laughs> um, cause model magic is actually, it's very lightweight and it's very squishy still, like without you feeling like you're going to crack it. So it, it's kind of like a homemade stress ball and it's, it's kind of nice. So I like it. <laughs> and he sits really cool. <laughs> like when he sits, he's got his legs that come up probably because of the armature that I have in there. I don't know how good um, the model magic is at holding its own shape and drying there. If it was, if like this would have stayed that way, if I didn't have an aluminum foil armature in it, or even if this one would have stayed that way. I like, I honestly don't know, but he sits on his little tentacles nicely, so I like him. I like him a lot. Um, I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, but I was pleasantly surprised with how nicely the model magic works with a multitude of things. So, yeah. Um, so, go ahead, create your favorite animal, and show me what you got going on. All right. So long. Have a good rest of your week. Bye-bye.